Hey guys, we're now going to do some energy problems where there will be work done by non-conservative forces. Let's check it out. So, if you remember, if either friction or an applied force or an external force, what I refer to as the force done by you, um, if either one of those two forces do work on an object, mechanical energy will not be conserved. And you can see this from the conservation of energy equation. This is initial mechanical energy. This is the final mechanical energy. And if this is zero, the energies are the same. But if this is not zero, then the energies will be different. Okay? So let's check this out. So even though the mechanical energy will not be conserved, you can still use the conservation of energy equation. So I put an asterisk here because even though we refer to that as the conservation of energy equation, it works for problems where energy is not conserved either. Okay? Um, so basically, irrespective of whether or not uh, energy is conserved, we can always use the main equation as a starting point. Um, some of the simplest problems we're going to have are just horizontal motion problems. And we'll do a few so I can explain, uh, I can show you guys how this stuff works. Let's check it out. So I have a 10 kilogram block initially at rest on a level, smooth surface. So let's put a little 10 block here. It's initially at rest, so the initial velocity is zero on a level, horizontal, smooth, no friction surface, okay? The block is pushed with a constant horizontal force, so the force is horizontal and it's a constant 20, and you do this for a distance of 5 meters. Okay, so it starts here, I push it for a distance of 5 meters until it gets over here. I want to calculate its final speed, in other words, how fast will it be moving after 5 meters? So. If this is initial, this here, five meters later, is final, and I want to know what is V final, okay? So we can use the energy conservation of energy equation to do this. There's an object moving, and we can do that. So kinetic initial plus potential initial plus work non-conservative equals kinetic final plus potential final. Is there a kinetic energy in the beginning? There isn't because the object is not moving. Is there a potential energy in the beginning? There isn't because the object is on the floor, so the height is zero. Is there work done by non-conservative forces? Well, the work done by non-conservative forces is the work done by you, which is an applied or external force, plus the work done by friction. There is no friction because we're talking about a smooth surface, but you are pushing on the object over a distance, so there is work done by you. Remember, when you want to calculate the work done by an external force, um, you can use the general work equation, which is Fd cosine of theta. So let's use that in here. The work done by you is just Fd cosine of theta. Uh, we know the force, that's a 20. We know the distance, that's a 5. And remember, theta here is the angle between the displacement and the force. In this case, we're pushing, um, we're pushing to the right horizontally, and then this object moves to the right. So the angle between these two is zero, okay? So, and the cosine of zero is simply one, so this becomes Fd. Remember, when the force is perpendicular to the displacement, the work simplifies to Fd. And that's what's gonna go right here. So the work done by non-conservative forces is Fd. Do I have kinetic energy at the end? I do, because this object's moving, and I wanna know how fast it's moving. So we have that, let's replace that with half mv final squared, and there is no potential energy because the object is still on the ground level, okay? So this is the final equation you get here, uh, or the equation that you get after you cross out all your energies and leave just the ones that exist, okay? And we're solving for V final, and we have all the other numbers. So the force is 20, the distance is 5, half 10, V final squared. If I move around all the numbers, I'm going to get, um, this is 100 times 2 is going to be 200, divided by 10 is going to be 20. So V final squared equals 20, so V final is the square root of 20, which is roughly 4.5 meters per second. But the most important part is obviously the setup. Once you get here, the rest is just algebra, okay? So that's it for the first example. Um, I'm going to jump in a second example here, and we're going to solve something similar. So it says here a block of unknown mass, so we don't know the mass, 
But that's okay because as you've seen with a lot of these energy questions, the mass will cancel. Anyway, it's sliding on a flat surface. I drew a flat surface with 30. So it has an initial velocity of 30. When it enters a long rough patch, okay? So let's draw, um, it's a rough patch, which means there is friction and that's gonna be kinetic friction. So we're gonna draw it like this to represent friction. If the coefficient of friction is 0.6, calculate the block's stopping distance. In other words, how long will it move along this path until it stops? Um, if I'm asking for stopping distance, it implies that it stops. So I'm just gonna put that somewhere here, let's say, the final velocity will be zero. And I wanna know um, what the stopping distance is. If my velocity is 30 before I enter the friction path, it means that it's going to be 30 all the way up until right there. So this is sort of my initial point, okay? So I can say that it's 30 before it enters, 30 just as it enters, and this is the stopping distance that I wanna know. From here to here, what is the distance, d or delta x? And I know that in this interval, the coefficient of friction is 0.6, okay? Again, we can do, uh, we can solve this with the um, work with the energy equation, with the long energy equation. And the reason we can do that is because, is because when I write the energy equation, let me put it here, this guy here, work non-conservative, is made up of two parts. Work non-conservative is made up of the work done by you plus the work done by friction. Since this is a problem of change in velocities due to friction, velocities are kinetic energies, and friction is part of this, this guy here, then we can solve this, okay? So all the elements of this problem are in the energy equation. So let's start. Is there kinetic energy in the beginning? There is because there's a velocity, there's a potential energy in the beginning. There is not because it, this thing is on the, on the ground level. Is there work done by non-conservative forces? So the work done by you is zero because you're not doing anything, you're just watching this thing move. The work done by friction does exist because as this object's moving to the right, friction is pushing it to the left. So friction is slowing the block down, it's consuming its energy, right? So there is work done by friction, and the work done by friction, uh, if you remember, the work done by kinetic friction is negative friction distance, okay? So we do have this. I'm gonna replace this here, half mv squared initial plus negative friction distance. Let's keep going here to the other side. Is there kinetic energy at the end? The answer is no, because it comes to a stop. Is there potential at the end? There's no potential at the end because you're still on ground level. So you get this interesting thing where there's a bunch of stuff on the left and then the right is just zero. Uh, that might seem weird at first, but I can move this to the right and then I have positive equals positive. So half m vi squared equals friction d. We're looking for, we're trying to solve for d. Um, one thing I can do is calculate friction using the friction equation and then just plug in the numbers. Um, I have all these numbers and I have all the necessary numbers to find friction. Friction, if you remember, is mu normal. So I could just calculate this number here and put it there or I can plug in the, the uh, variables for it, I'll show you. So I have mg is this way, normal is this way. Because there are no other forces in the y-axis and there are only forces in the x-axis with this object moving sideways, since there are no forces in the y-axis except for normal and mg, they have to cancel each other so they equal each other. Uh, remember that, so mu k normal becomes mu k mg. If you do that, and you plug that in here, you see that the masses will cancel, which in this problem, you had to do this because you have an unknown mass. So there's no way around it. You have to write out the entire expression for friction, plug it into the equation so that the masses could actually cancel. So let's do that. Half mvi squared equals friction is mu k mg. Distance is what I'm looking for. The masses cancel. So we're almost done. Now we just have to solve for D. D will be V initial squared divided by two. I'm gonna divide both sides by mu K and G. So mu and G. The initial velocity is 30. 
friction is 0.6, the coefficient of friction is 0.6, gravity we're going to round that to 10, and when you plug all of this into the calculator you get 45 meters, 45 meters. Alright, that's it for this one.